Hey everyone, I'm Noah, a game creator living in the south of France. Since the end of December last year, I've been working on a little video game called Dashing Fire. I've been creating it on my own, from home, using Unity as the game engine, programming in C Sharp, and bringing the world to life with Photoshop. For almost four years I've been learning the game dev craft, and have made dozens of tiny projects for fun. I also released a game on Steam last year called The Dreadful Whispers. Dashing Fire will be my second commercial title. If you've watched some of my previous devlogs, you'll know that I underestimated the time it would take to complete this small universe. I imagined four months would be enough to finish making a little planet-hopping roguelike, but here we are almost nine months later. This is mostly because I didn't consider balance in my initial estimate, and that doing sports, taking holidays, weekends, reading, drawing, and just varying my days with good stuff other than game dev would of course slow things down a bit, but obviously the alternative of overworking and obsessing over a single project would be far from healthy. The quality would suffer, enjoyment in the process greatly reduced, and productivity hacks to pieces in the long run. So no regrets there, I'm happy with how fast things are going. With that said, in this video I'll share my progress since the beginning of the summer leaving some stuff out of course so I don't spoil the whole game. Hopefully this gets you excited for the release of Dashing Fire later this year and fills you with an eagerness to keep up good, healthy work on your own projects. First of all, the cute, fiery player has been improved. He looks a little more stylish, with wings giving his dash a more dynamic feel, and paint-like trails which look satisfying. Destroying juicy enemies is also more punchy and crunchy, with a splatter of life essence left behind and a cracked shell falling downwards. It's a simple addition really, but took quite some time since I needed to do so for every single enemy in the game and there's about four dozen. Defeating a boss was until recently quite anticlimactic, as you can see here, but now there's a shattered shadow that then explodes into fireworks in the sun. Bosses were also balanced, some visuals were improved, and a golden highlight was added to make it more clear to the player what he must dash into to defeat his foe. Same for every enemy character. A stylish red highlight makes them pop out from dark planets, and they now look a tad more menacing. Although Dashing Fire has little UI, the bit that's there clearly needed some improvements, so I remade the hearts and star and level visuals. The titles that appear at the start of a level were also improved, and sounds were sprinkled on every button and click, from the shortcuts menu to the pause menu to skipping cutscenes. It can be a slightly tedious work at times, but I make sure to not do it all at once, alternating between more fun tasks, like balancing power-ups and improving effects, with a slightly chore-like nature of copying and pasting audio source components. But even chores can be enjoyed, they're quite relaxing, and you get that nice tingling feeling of slow and steady progress. Although the Steam page isn't quite up to date, something I'll be working on in the following weeks, I did implement lots of cool Steam achievements. Doing so is super easy, it's about one line of code placed in the right spot. My achievements range from defeating bosses, to completing areas and finishing levels without taking damage or destroying any creatures for example. After receiving some helpful playtesting feedback, I realised the merchant world and the whole process of purchasing power-ups was a little confusing. In short, it was more cluttered and complex than it needed to be. So before, you had to move towards a merchant and click on a question mark to find out what it sells, and then hover over the confirm button to find out the price. Instead, now everything is clearly laid out from the get-go, and the player simply needs to click to purchase. There's also a little power-up line at the bottom right of the screen, showing the player what powers he now owns. The simple transition scenes between levels where the player can decide between short-term or long-term gains was also polished and made a little more clear with these arrows explaining the link between choices. So you might notice a recurring pattern here, the importance of clarity and how I'm really trying to make an effort uh, to make things more clear, communicating to the player that his actions 
have an impact or you know just make it clear what you can actually do. If you've watched the previous devlog you might notice a bit more texture to the art thanks to these gritty overlays which I also added. One fires that transform the player into his attack state are now golden and friendly looking rather than fierce orange. Not sure why it took me so long to change that despite many playtesters telling me they easily confused enemies and helpful fires. Another obvious issue with the game, which I've only addressed and fixed recently, was the movement spots. Before, each little tree on a planet had a 2D collider, which if clicked on, would have the player dash towards it. The problem with detecting clicks through colliders is that if there are several that overlap each other, or if the player is slightly inaccurate, or if an enemy with its own collider moves in front of a move spot, then clicks can easily be missed. This made the game feel at times unresponsive, a little buggy, and even caused some game overs. It was really frustrating seeing the player click, knowing he wanted to move, but nothing happening. So I removed all colliders and reworked the system. All move spots are put into a list of positions, and when the player clicks, the nearest position in that list to the mouse cursor will be the player's target. So now to my great relief, the movement feels extremely smooth and responsive. In the two months since the last devlog, I also had time to make cutscenes look a lot nicer. For some reason, I've always limited myself to two Photoshop brushes, the default hard round one and the soft round one, with perhaps a few small exceptions. And that's cool, simplicity can go a long way, but I've recently discovered the magic and fun that comes from downloading brush packs, from lightning bolts to watercolor and it can really expand the imagination and bury the artwork. Again, the brushes aren't nearly as important as the artist behind them, but still it can help a bit and it's a ton of fun. I've had a great time adding that bit of extra grit to my art, or trying slightly new styles with cutscenes. You can even see Tenebris Sky's background clouds have been reimagined. It looks a lot less stale than before. There are a lot of things that have been done from my small workstation these past months. It's been quite some time since I've made such good progress, plenty of which I can't share here since I want to avoid spoiling my whole game until it gets released. And I'm pretty confident that the good progress, enjoyment and renewed feeling of creativity comes from the variety I've been slowly infusing into my days. So simply put, not making games all day, every day of the week stopping before I even want to stop, and just reading books instead, learning a new skill like cooking, you know, doing sport, playing a truckload of awesome board games with friends and family. With that said, if you're interested in playing Dashing Fire when it gets released, and want to help me have it featured somewhere significant on the Steam store, then consider wishlisting it. The link is in the description, and doing so is completely free with only one click. Anyway, thank you for watching this game creation devlog. If you also want to dive into this rich, creative world, I suggest you check out the four Udemy courses my brother and I created. Each one will teach you how to make a game, learn programming, character design, animation, and more. There's a course for complete beginners, one on how to make a strategy game, another on how to create a top-down shooter, and finally a platformer adventure. The links to all these courses are also in the description. Okay, I'll see you for the next devlog video, where Dashing Fire should be even closer to being considered done. Take care, stay tuned, cheers!